The Lord be with you. And also with you. We're going to focus on a passage from Matthew this morning that fits tremendously with, with uh, the well-known hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. I'll just have you remain seated as we hear the invocation and the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's word from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against it, and that fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, do you want the good news first, or the bad news, the law, or the gospel? Maybe I should just tell you and let you decide. One month from yesterday is the last day of classes of the semester. Only final exams will remain at that point. Does that make you breathe a sigh of relief, or does that make like a little bit of sweat come on the back of your neck? And I think I have to say for myself, it's both. We may wonder at this point in the semester, right in the thick of it all, what words of wisdom can help guide us through the rest of the semester, the next month, or even just today, to help us set our compasses, balance our equilibrium, help us finish the semester well. And perhaps it's these words of Jesus that we just heard that have great potential to motivate us, but to kind of remind us of where we stand and where we fall with Jesus. So we'll consider the context in these words we just heard. Those words of Jesus about the wise man, the foolish man, the house on the rock, or the house in the sand, and which one stands and which one falls, those are the concluding verses of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. If you look in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, for three chapters, it's all red words of Jesus, all solid there. It's some of the most well-known, comforting, challenging things Jesus ever spoke. It starts with the Beatitudes, talks, Jesus kind of re-envisions the Ten Commandments. You know, it's not just what you do or what you say, but it's what you think inside of you that's also significant. It's where Jesus gives the, the Lord's Prayer, talks about prayer, fasting and giving, and talks about that, that famous phrase, ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, and that wonderful words of comfort, consider the lilies of the field and, and do not judge, be perfect, all these challenging, amazing things. And when he finishes all these things, his conclusion is this, that we just heard. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and he lays it out for them. Jesus' hearers had arguably heard the most amazing words that had ever been spoken in some ways. And the only difference between the groups that he talked about were not what they heard, because they all heard the same thing, but what they did based on what they heard, whether they would put into practice what Jesus said. It's that time of the semester where we may realize that everything hasn't necessarily gone how we would have thought this semester. And, and I shouldn't be pessimistic. Maybe they went better, better than you ever thought. But it's different. Maybe you, I don't know, have painted yourself into a corner, though, in some class or in some part of your life where you're really in a tricky spot. It reminds me of a pastor that I knew way, way back when I was first in the parish, and he had a little country church, and there was never enough money, and they were always 
trying to figure out ways to draw people to church to hear God's word. He had a little country church that was painted white and the paint was peeling and it didn't look that great. And he thought, well, one of the first things we have to do at least is we have to paint this church so that it looks a little bit better for people. So he told the elders and they said, you know, pastor, money's tight. I don't know that we can even afford to do that. He said, he said well, there's a, a few old cans of paint in the church basement and maybe that'll work, and, but we can't really buy more. And so it's time to paint and he said, well, we're all busy. We got a plant, pastor, so you're gonna have to do it yourself. So the pastor's muttering to himself and he takes the paint and realizes it's not enough. So he thinks if, if he just stirs a little water in, kind of thins it out, and that will he'll make it stretch. So he starts painting one side and he paints the other side. He gets to the third side. He's painting the fourth side. And the clouds in the sky are really dark. And he realizes it's gonna start pouring rain. And it starts pouring buckets of rain. And he looks at this church that he's just painted and the Pain is just washing down off of it, and he's so frustrated and exasperated. He looks up to God and he says, God, why would you do this? And this voice he hears that says, Repaint and thin no more. <laughs> okay, so the bad news is that's the worst joke that's ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> The good news is the sermon can only go up from here, maybe. But, but, but the, good, the good news honestly does lead us to Jesus. And the idea of cutting corners, and when we cut corners in our faith life, not cutting corners when you're painting or building, if you cut corners when you're building and you don't have a solid foundation, you're going to have a disastrous result. And the point is simple. When you cut corners in your faith life, you can have a really shaky foundation and it can crash when things get difficult. When the semester really gets busy, <clears throat> maybe right about now. And when we do take too many spiritual shortcuts, we do need to repent and acknowledge and realize that we've fallen short of taking advantage of that which God would have for us of his word. And so we need to live in forgiveness then, realize that our lives can rebuilt, be rebuilt or reestablished in Jesus. But why do people take shortcuts, I guess, is the question to ask. Why would we take spiritual shortcuts if we know it's so much better to have this solid foundation? And I think the three little pigs are the perfect illustration. They build these houses. The first two, let's build a house out of straw, let's build a house out of sticks. Why do they do that? Because it's quick and it's easy. And then they have more time to play. Let's just get it done quick, because there are video games to play, and there is pizza to eat, and there are naps to take. And too much of that gets you on shaky ground as a student or faith-wise. Don't miss here, though. We need to sleep. We need to eat. We need to take time to enjoy life, the company that we have here. But it is possible to be foolish in the things that we do. And so we find ourselves maybe at this point thinking, okay, now... Are there any shortcuts that I can take? Because I haven't read what I was supposed to read. I haven't started this paper that's supposed to be done. So it's time to pray, maybe. Roll up our sleeves, ask for energy to do the things we need to do, be honest with ourselves and with each other. Because we rely on the one who didn't take any shortcuts. The one who did everything perfectly, everything as it needed to be done, Jesus, who didn't skip one thing that should have been done or do one thing that shouldn't have been done. And we don't live perfectly, so we build our lives on him instead of ourselves. That becomes our comfort and our security and our hope. 
He went right through the midst of death and trying to avoid it because that would have been easier or seemed easier. He went right through the midst to show that he would be triumphant on the other side. So I think that's calling us to follow Jesus right through the midst of the semester and the month of November. I don't know if anybody's no shave November, you know, where guys just say, I'm not going to shave because it's a lot easier to, or maybe there's a motivation to, you know, for charity. But uh, we're not going to shave anything off of what we do in Jesus' name this month. And we'll come through on the other side. And a month from today, we'll be looking at a few final exams and say we can finish those off to God's glory. So I pray the strength, the energy, the ability to follow Jesus today and throughout the semester. In Jesus' name, amen.